to Maple Madness, the Globe's look at the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. I'm Kate Boddicker. And I'm Isaac Swatsky. And we are going to be your guiding light through the chaos of the appropriately named March Madness. I mean, obviously, both of us are so wise in the ways of D1 basketball. So we had to provide our thoughts to the storm of professional analysts who are all asking the same question right now. Who exactly is going to make it into the tournament? It's the big question for a reason. The teams involved are what make this time of year what it is and everyone's anxious to get to filling out their brackets. Personally, of the teams in question this year, I think we need to start with North Carolina, the preseason number one overall rank. Everyone wants to know, are they in? I say they are not in. One in nine in quadrant one games, that just won't cut it. Another big team that I think just came up short is Michigan. At 17 and 14, there's not enough quality wins to carry them to the tournament. They have lost a lot of close games down the stretch that they needed to win. For some bubble teams I think did make it, let's start out west. I think in the Pac-12, they sneak a third team in. University of Southern California gets in. In the best conference in college basketball, I think West Virginia gets in with the win tonight over Texas Tech in the Big 12 tournament. 7-11 in that conference will get them in. So even if they make it though, most of those teams would be in the bottom, right? So realistically, who is going to have an actual chance of winning it all? You cannot have this conversation without mentioning the potential number one seeds. Kansas, Houston, UCLA, and Purdue are all obvious picks to win it. Aside from that, I think Baylor, Texas, Arizona are all also serious contenders to win it all. All right, I mean, this analysis is all well and good, but personally, despite not knowing anything about them, I do always feel compelled to cheer for Arkansas. Now, hear me out. I know that seems maybe a little random, um, but they were the first team that I ever put to win it all on my first bracket, you know, years ago before I knew anything. And, you know, I feel a sentimental attachment to them. So you gotta be honest with me, what are their actual chances this year? The best case scenario, they make the second weekend. Joey Brackets has a number nine seed right now, which would mean they'd be playing a number one seed in the second round. Not great. They are 19th in the nation on Ken Palm, so they definitely have a chance to compete. So, well, I mean, that's good to hear. Is there anyone in that same vein who you think is maybe overrated this year? They've historically done well in the past, but just maybe aren't making it happen this year. I hate to say it, but since the loss of their point guard Zakai Ziegler to a season-ending ACL injury, Tennessee has no chance to do anything in March. You need good guard play in March. Tennessee doesn't have that anymore. Staying in the SEC, Nate Oates has not had tournament success with Alabama. Although they will be a number one seed and have a really good regular season, I'm not eager to ride them far until I see Nate Oates deliver in the postseason. In the Big Ten, I personally think Illinois is overrated. On paper, they have a really talented team, but in my opinion, they do not pass the eye test. There are two and 10 in quadrant one games. That's not good. St. Mary's has had an incredible season, but sadly they are just not there in my opinion. A weak schedule besides Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference is not gonna help them out in March. Well, that is gonna do it for this episode of Maple Madness. Make sure to check back in early next week to find out all the different ways that people on campus are making their own brackets, as well as the reveal of our brackets and what new competition that's gonna bring to the studio. Thanks for tuning in, and we're going to see you next week for more Madness.